A standard lens is any lens with a focal length close to the diagonal measurement of the frame size of the camera. Such a lens renders a perspective we perceive as natural. For a micro four thirds camera, the diagonal is about 22 mm for four to three aspect, 19 mm for three to two, and 18.5 mm for 16 to nine. So Panasonic's 20 mm f1.7 spans the standard lens designation neatly. In practice, a standard lens is usually a little longer than that, with a horizontal angle of view of about 40 degrees, and a focal length in micro four thirds of 25 mm. In these days of high quality zooms, it is surprising that the standard lens is still popular, but it has many attractions. First of all, it is less technically demanding than zooms to make, so it can combine high speed, corner to corner sharpness and compact size with reasonable price. Micro Four Thirds has lenses from other makers such as Voigtlander at 25mm, but the competition is mainly the Olympus 25mm f1.8 and its own stablemate the Panasonic Leica 25mm f1.4. This lens is quite light in weight and made in plastic, and while it doesn't have the nice made of metal feel of something like the Olympus 17mm f1.8, it does feel well made, with smooth manual focusing and a nicely grippy focusing ring. There's no stabilisation or aperture ring like the 15mm f1.7, just a standard vanilla lens. It comes with an effective bayonet fit lens hood, and a ring to pretty up the lens when the hood isn't in place. That's about all there is to it really, a vanilla version of a standard lens. Don't read it that as boring though, because its performance to price ratio isn't at all boring. It used to be that with a fast lens, you needed to stop down a couple of stops to get adequate across the frame performance. This 25mm f1.7 acquits itself very well at full aperture, so you can get nicely limited depth of field as if you were using a full frame 50mm at about f3.5. As a rule I used it at f2, a half stop down from full aperture, and the point from which the lens's very best edge to edge performance starts, though the difference between that and full aperture is academic under day to day shooting conditions. You can get extra sharpness by stopping down beyond f2, but it's really only necessary to gain extra depth of field. That f2 gives a fast shutter speed even with 200 ISO set under most circumstances, so that the fact that the lens isn't stabilised doesn't matter so much. Even on shots of buildings there didn't seem to be any noticeable distortion, and purple fringing isn't apparent. A light source shining directly or almost into the lens can cause some flare and loss of contrast, but the nicely deep lens hood helps out, and there's no problem with normal backlighting like this for example. Focusing speed is as fast as any micro four thirds lens and beyond means of testing without instruments. Suffice to say that you point it and press the shutter and it will be in focus immediately. Usefully, it focuses more closely than most 25 mm as this shot of a bee in a flower shows, down to less than 30 cm or a foot in fact. The lens isn't weather sealed, which at its price point isn't surprising and in fact neither are its more expensive competitors. The main question for most photographers will be, do I need this lens at all? Only you can know that of course, but here is my reasoning, or rambling depending on your point of view. Although this lens is nominally a standard lens, in reality micro four thirds cameras come with standard range zooms of 14 to 42 mm, with a maximum aperture of f3.5 at 14 mm and about f5 at 25 mm. So, if you have a kit zoom, you get a much faster lens, around three stops better at 25mm, for use in low light and to cut down on depth of field. If you're photographing someone in a dimly lit bar, for example, you might be able to shoot at 125th of a second instead of a 15th, while rendering the background as an artistically satisfying smooth blur rather than a confusing fuzziness. It's the difference between a professional looking and an everyday shot. For the 25mm focal length itself, if you're a fan of primes, Panasonic's 15mm, 25mm and 42.5mm, or the appropriate Olympus equivalents, make a classic lens set, all high speed and maximum image quality. The 25mm lens's angle of view makes it quite versatile. It's just long enough to make portraits and short enough for landscapes, and it's the length of choice for many street photographers. If you do want a fast 25mm, there's plenty of competition, including the ultra-fast f 095s 
All the competitors are much more expensive though. For me, the two main contenders would both be Panasonic's, this one and the F14. Olympus's is more expensive than the F17 and not as good as the F14 Leica. The Leica designated 25mm from Panasonic is a stellar performer, faster and sharper than the F17 and worth the extra money. The question is, do you need the extra half stop and will you see the sharpness? I would buy the F14 if I used 25mm as my everyday lens, rather than as a low light, shallow depth of field occasional alternative to a zoom. My only argument against the F17 is purely personal, the focal length itself. I find the 25mm angle of view a bit tight and restrictive for everyday photography, but that's me. If you have a standard zoom, or especially a super zoom, it's hard to think of a more useful second lens than this. As the 25mm component of a classic wide-angle standard short tele prime set, it is a shrewd choice. The current price is, amazingly, less than £150 UK, US$225. In terms of bangs per buck, hold on, I'm English. Measured in terms of lines per millimetre for each pound of sterling spent, no, as you were. In terms of bangs per buck, it rates with the Olympus 45mm f1.8. In any language, that's high praise and it's a bargain. Thanks for watching.